The screencast discusses membranes. The topic of membranes can be found in Chapter 5 of your textbook. This screencast was designed to help you achieve the following objectives. Define a membrane. Describe the two classes of membranes. And for each specific membrane, describe its location, its structure, and its functions. So what is a membrane? A membrane is a flat sheet of pliable tissue that covers and lines parts of the body. And when we say pliable tissue, we just mean that it's flexible. It can be bent or molded to the shape of an organ or a surface. The membrane that you are probably most familiar with would be your skin or cutaneous membrane. The function of membranes are as follows. Some membranes cover the body surfaces. For example, the cutaneous membrane is your skin. Other membranes line the body cavities. Some of these cavities open to the external environment, such as the digestive tract or the respiratory tract. Other cavities are closed to the external environment, such as the thoracic cavity or the abdominal pelvic cavity. But all of these cavities are lined with membranes. Membranes also form protective sheets around organs, such as the stomach or the large intestine or the kidneys or the heart. Membranes fall into two categories or classes. Epithelial membranes include cutaneous membranes, mucous membranes, and serous membranes. All epithelial membranes have an outer layer of epithelial tissue. Connective tissue membranes are composed exclusively of connective tissue. Synovial membranes are examples of connective tissue membranes and the only one that we're going to study. First, let's discuss epithelial membranes. Epithelial membranes are the membranes that cover and line. They cover the body as a whole, they cover organs, and they line cavities that open to the external environment and those that are closed to the external environment. In lab, when we were looking at epithelial tissue, you noted that epithelial tissue covers organs and lines the body cavities. Below that layer of epithelial tissue, there is always some connective tissue, and the two tissues together make up the epithelial membranes. Epithelial membranes include cutaneous membranes, mucous membranes, and serous membranes. The cutaneous membrane is your skin. This membrane is unique in that it is the only dry membrane. The function of the cutaneous membrane is protection of the underlying tissue. Your skin is a very effective barrier against environmental pollutants, bacteria, viruses, to an extent fungal spores. Also, toxic chemicals are prevented from gaining access to the blood and other body fluids by your skin. The cutaneous membrane, like all epithelial membranes, consists of an outer layer of epithelial tissue and an underlying layer of connective tissue. Here we have on the left a microscopic section of skin and a drawing of skin on the right, similar to a figure in your book. 
The outer layer of the skin is called the epidermis, and it's composed of stratified squamous epithelium. This epithelium is actually what's called keratinized, that is, the very outer layer of the epithelium is composed of dead cells, and those dead cells are filled with a protein called keratin. Deep to the epidermis, we have the dermis, and the dermis is composed of mostly dense connective tissue. The epidermis, which is composed of epithelium, and the dermis, which is composed of, the, of connective tissue, together form the cutaneous membrane. Mucous membranes line all the body cavities that open to the external environment, such as your respiratory tract and digestive tract that are shown here, but would also include the urinary tract as well as the reproductive tract. Mucous membranes get their name from the fact that they are always wet due to the large number of glands that secrete mucus onto the membrane surface. Mucous membranes are always involved in absorption and or secretion. Mucous membranes, like all epithelial membranes, consist of an outer layer of epithelial tissue resting on a inner layer of connective tissue. In mucous membranes, that connective tissue is loose connective tissue, and it's referred to as the lamina propria. The type of epithelial tissue really depends on location. If we're talking about the digestive tract in the mouth and esophagus, specifically, it's stratified squamous epithelium very similar to the stratified squamous epithelium of the skin or cutaneous membrane. However, this epithelial tissue is not keratinized. In the remainder of the digestive tract, the stomach, large intestine, small intestine, the epithelial tissue is simple columnar epithelium. In the respiratory tract, we mainly have pseudostratified columnar epithelial tissue. This is the tissue you looked at in lab that was ciliated. Before we end our conversation on the mucous membranes, I do want to call special attention to the urinary tract where the mucous membrane is wet, but not due to the secretions of mucus, but simply due to the presence of urine. Serous membranes are epithelial membranes that line cavities that are closed to the external environment, and they also cover organs that are found in those cavities. For example, serous membranes line the thoracic cavity and they also cover the lungs as well as the heart. The surface epithelium is composed of simple squamous and the underlying layer of connective tissue is areolar connective tissue. Serous membranes consist of two layers. The layer that surrounds the organ and actually is in contact with the organ is referred to as the visceral layer. The outer layer, referred to as the parietal layer, is the layer that lines the walls of the body cavity. Separating the two layers is a potential space which contains a fluid which is referred to as a serous fluid. To visualize this, look at the bottom of the figure on the right. Imagine taking your fist and pushing it downward into a partially inflated 
balloon. Your fist is an organ. The part of the balloon that is touching your fist would be the visceral layer of the serous membrane. And that portion of the balloon, that outer surface of the balloon, would be lining the body cavity and would be the parietal serosa or parietal layer of the serous membrane. Serous membranes have very specific names depending on what organ they surround. The peritoneum or peritoneal membranes surround the organs of the abdominal pelvic cavity. The pleural membranes surround the lungs. The pericardial membranes or pericardium surround the heart. I'm not holding you responsible for knowing these terms at this time. I simply wanted to introduce them to you so that when we cover the respective organ systems and you hear these names again, you'll remember, oh yeah, these are serous membranes, which we talked about earlier in the semester. I thought I'd finally show a figure from your book to, to summarize the epithelial membranes. Recall that the epithelial membranes cover the entire body surface in the case of the cutaneous membrane or skin. Mucous membranes line the body cavities that open to the outside world, such as the respiratory system or the gastrointestinal tract. And then we have the serous membranes, which line the body cavities that are closed to the external environment, and they also cover the organs found in those cavities. Epithelial membranes consist of an outer layer of epithelial tissue and an underlying layer of connective tissue. The only connective tissue membrane is the synovial membrane. And the synovial membrane is found at a synovial joint. We will discuss synovial joints shortly, but basically these are the most movable joints of the body, such as your shoulder joint, your knee joint, your hip joint, etc. At a synovial joint, the bones are separated at the joint by a space, and that space is filled with the synovial fluid. Lining that joint is the synovial membrane, and that is the connective tissue membrane that is responsible for secreting the synovial fluid. That synovial fluid is very similar in consistency to uncooked egg whites, and its purpose is to lubricate the joint. This slide just simply shows a, another example of a synovial joint. This would be the shoulder joint where the scapula articulates with the humerus of the arm. Notice that the synovial membrane lines the surface of the joint and again produces the synovial fluid that lubricates the joint. Now let's review the objectives of the screencast. Define a membrane. Describe the two classes of membranes. And for each membrane, describe its location, structure, and basic functions. This screencast concludes the material for this module.